Uh, I grew up part of my childhood, my teenage years in Koei Marama on, on Tamaki Drive. I can't understand why that whole area from Orake to St. Helier's is not like the Gold Coast. It's basically, in my, in, my experience, in my sort of experience of other cities and things, you would expect anywhere with those sorts of beaches close to Auckland would be line-to-line -line, um, skyscrapers all the way along there. And that's ex you know, the kind of Auckland that I think that I would expect and I think young people would expect. Old, you know, the old people won't. And I'm sort of in between. You know, I, I, my mother only lived, lived there until, until a couple of years ago. And uh, the, clearly that population there didn't want that. But they're the old population. We've got to think about the next population. We've got to think about Carlos's generation, not, not mine or my, mom, or my mother's. The young ones, darling, we're the young ones And the young ones shouldn't be afraid What the council did today has united people of different political stripes, it's fair to say. Yeah, I mean, in, in my own words, I, I've described this as what I termed the old town and the new city. I don't think this is a left and right issue. Uh, this is this is an issue about two and completely different visions for Wellington and in, and in fact for all cities in New Zealand and the Western world really we have these two factions between people who sort of grew up in Wellington at the time when it was a large provincial town they they liked it for what it was uh, and and they value that and they're they're totally within their rights to value that and then we have the new city which is this sort of new generation of of young people who see this kind of ambitious vision. They want Wellington to be like Melbourne, Amsterdam, you know, London, you know, <laughs> however big you want to see it. Uh, and they're not actually left-right things. In fact, there's, like, there's left and right on both sides. The, the old town does have a lot of sort of these conservatives who want to keep it how it is, but there's a left-wing faction there too who see the sort of conservation, let's not, you know, build a bunch of new concrete structures. Uh, you know, they don't want that change. And, and, and you know, the new city, as I put it, the sort of new generation, yeah, there's a lot of left-wing, there's a lot of progressives there, and they want tram lines and bike lanes and apartments, but there's also the right there too, because, like, a lot of that point is deregulation, right? Mm. When you remove regulations, you allow developers to build more houses, more apartments. So it, it's, it's, it's actually a really interesting political divide, and it doesn't fit within our traditional bounds. And let's put it out there, Auckland could be twice the population. Aucklanders want the infrastructure of Melbourne, yet they're happy to be at, what, 25% of the population. Get real. by the sun Once there were valleys where rivers used to run Once there were blue skies with white clouds high above Once they were part of an everlasting love We were the lovers who strolled through green fields. The half gallon's gone, the quarter acre shrunk, and New Zealand's changed. It's changed so the easy generalizations don't fit. It's been Americanized, it's been suburbanized, it's been feminized, it's been consumerized. In fact, it's much more now a part of the universal anyway than something unique in itself. But the world's changed too. The world's shrunk. More people come here to enjoy New Zealand. More New Zealanders go overseas. Some still to pursue career ladders, not now to the UK, but to anywhere. But most of them come back. 
and they come back now with the old diffidence gone. There's a confident feeling that New Zealand is a good place, a superior feeling almost. And it's a good place because it's a small society. Small is beautiful in this overcrowded world, and it's a small society in the most beautiful part of that world. A good place to grow up, a good place to bring up kids, a good place for living the good life, a machine for the pursuit of happiness. But the paradise part of my original title still remains true, or at least this. It's as close an approximation to paradise as we're going to get in this troubled, overcrowded world. New Zealanders are a privileged people. Personally, I wish I was young enough to enjoy that privilege with me. Fields are gone now, parched by the sun, gone from the valleys where rivers used to run. We've got quite a good collection of apartments. We have some beautiful coastal properties, some luxury homes for coastal waterfront properties. Uh, we have a number of rural properties uh, with, um, you know, five to ten acre blocks with a nice uh, established home. We've got commercial properties, some CBD Auckland properties, uh, and some development sites. Why the Chinese? Is it simply that you've got the Shanghai Expo and there's, a, there's the ability to, to hook into the pavilion? No, well, the um, Chinese economy, we all know about it. It's um, growing at a phenomenal rate. Um, Chinese government's indicated that it's um, time to look at spending offshore, so they're freeing up those opportunities. And we already have a, a, in the vicinity of 150,000 Chinese people living uh, in New Zealand. So we thought with the focus on Expo, uh, John Key's initiatives, uh, New Zealand government with the free trade agreement, the desire to grow uh, trade between New Zealand and China by 2015 up to 20 billion, that um, it's going to be happening anyway. So let's take a good selection in New Zealand product over and uh, make some connections and uh, look at helping that process. Gone with the cold wind that swept into my heart Gone with the lovers who let their dreams depart Where are the green fields that we used to roam Look, I mean, as I say, a year and a bit into this job, I have to say New Zealand has a fantastic future ahead of it itself. Uh, there is no reasons why we can't do exceptionally well in the world. Uh, if I take a step back and think about our position in the Indo-Pacific region, when you think about the abundant natural resources we have, the strong social and democratic institutions, uh, and most importantly, some amazing, creative, talented, driven, uh, ambitious people. I think New Zealand has a fantastic future ahead of it, and there should be no excuses for why we can't go realise that potential and that future for ourselves.